Good afternoon. It's great to always be able to encourage one another in the Lord. And I'm wondering today how you have been encouraged in the Lord. What has happened that you could give thanks? Paul says to give thanks in all circumstances. Uh, so I, for one, I'm thankful for the staff here. We just finished our staff meetings. We've just moved them from Fridays to Wednesdays. Um, uh, we're grateful for the Lord's provision for one of the staff members, uh, which meant that we did have to shuffle staff times around. So just praising the Lord uh, for how we can work as a team. We're working hard. Uh, we're working hard, and I'm going to grab this here to prepare for fall. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, this here. If I can hold it up close enough, maybe you can see it there. It's called The Story of Everything. And as we look at the entire storyline of Scripture, uh, we're going to learn how God's purpose and plan of redemption has been from the very beginning. And uh, see how the Bible is one story that, uh, through many authors, it has one author who stands behind it all, the story of God, and learn to understand the scriptures and to appreciate what God has done in redeeming a people for himself. Today I wanted to take a look at, uh, we're going to do two more weeks of the Psalms here, and I wanted to take a look at uh, the Psalms of Ascent, the Songs of Ascent, they're called. Uh, they begin in Psalm 120, and there's 15 of them. Psalm 120 all the way to Psalm 134. And uh, they are called the Songs of Ascent, well, first of all, because they're all titled this. Uh, you'll notice that the superscription above each of the Psalms from 120 to 134 says it's a Song of Ascent. These 15 Songs of Ascent show that there's been some sort of a collection uh, and that the unity of the Psalms, uh, they're, they're, they've been structured and pulled together uh, with a great intention. Eight of the 15 Psalms in this section mention Jerusalem or Zion. So we can see in Psalm 120, uh, 122, uh, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates O Jerusalem. Or we could look at uh, Psalm 125. It's those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Zion is the, the, the hill upon which Jerusalem was built, the, the temple mount where it existed. And, and all of these Psalms are, are collected together and, and they were intended to be sung as the pilgrims would be going up to worship in the temple. Now, if we just do a quick recap of the entire book of Psalms, what we remember is that the Psalms begin with David and his consolation, uh, consolidation of power, and, and then the slipping away of the kingdom at, in book three, and then the, the hope that God would redeem his people, and, and that God has always been the dwelling place for his people. And now, book five, it's beginning to crescendo to the end, moving from lament to praise, that, that God is filling his promise. He will keep his promise to David, that someone will rule on the throne, a descendant of David, forever and ever. And so, as the people of God would have gone up to the temple then to worship, we hear refrains like, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. And they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. And so there's the picture of God restoring worship. Now, these songs of ascent, I, I think that there is a parallel even to our day where we've, we've been in exile. I've called it the Covidian exile, where we had 13 weeks where we were not gathering as a church, something like that. And, and it was a long season, an extended season, where we were worshiping virtually. And so we were watching like on the screen and, and uh, suddenly... Now we're able to gather back together. For some people, it's still not, this isn't a time where they can gather because of concerns about uh, their own well-being and safety and health. But for others, uh, this has been the longest.
longing of the heart and yet we're not quite back to where we were and so there is this aching and longing for something great the the, the psalms of ascent they really are these songs of going up to jerusalem returning in worship coming to god in praise there's no mention of of a king in these psalms but yet we're starting to see that the rule of of god yahweh the the lord is is being meshed together with the rule of david and interestingly in the songs of ascent from psalm 120 to 134 we have four davidic psalms and and we'll recall at the end of book two at the end of psalm 72 it says the songs of david are ended but now suddenly we find that there are a couple of psalms of david Psalm 122, 124, 131, 133. And interestingly, if we were to think about the Songs of Ascent, 15 Psalms, we could think of it this way. Psalms 120 to 126. They mention Yahweh by name 24 times. Two of them are by David, and five of them are brand new. Psalms 128 to 134, there are seven psalms 24 times it mentions the name of yahweh two of those are the psalms of david and five of those are new and in the middle is the psalm that i'm going to preach this sunday psalm 127 and listen to these words of psalm 127 the pilgrims going up to worship god gathering together and it says um, and this is a song a psalm of solomon and it says unless the Lord builds the house. Now, what house is he referring to? None other than the temple that Solomon built, that, that Solomon was preparing. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, what city is that? Jerusalem, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, like the fruit of the womb, the, <laughs> not fruit of the loom, fruit of the womb, they are a reward. Yeah, you can comment right there and you can mock me for my tied tongue. I, I want you to see three things here from Psalm 127. If all of these Psalms of Ascent are the ascending up to the temple to worship the Lord, Psalm 127 is the middle one. There's the seven psalms before, seven psalms after, 24 mentions of Yahweh before, 24 mentions of Yahweh after, two psalms of David before, two mentions of David after. And in the middle is Solomon, who built the temple, built the house of the Lord. And he's rejoicing that the Lord has protected, established the city, that, that you can have all of the defenses, but unless the Lord is the one who prospers and cares for his worship it, it's in vain and, and unless the Lord keeps his promise to David that there would be a descendant who would sit on the throne forever then there would be no heritage you remember how book four book three ended in the Psalms it was dark it's the crown of David has been thrown into the dust Psalm 89 looking at verses 43 to the end that the crown of David thrown into the dust has God forgotten his promises and now as the pilgrims are marching up going to the house of God they're worshiping the Lord the Lord has built the temple the Lord has reestablished worship the Lord has ordained that his people praise him and yet in the midst of this psalm there is an ecstatic return from exile Psalm 124 if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when the people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Blessed be the Lord, the psalmist says, David says in verse 6, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We've escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. And so there's just this recollection not only of David's experience, but also of Israel. We're able to go up and worship unless the Lord had protected us, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. Now, as we come to this then, 
the dwelling place of God is this glorious dwelling place where as God dwells there, he brings a sense of togetherness. So Psalm 133, which is often uh, it's referred to as a, a psalm of unity, it says, How good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil running down the head, running on the beard of Aaron, running down the color of his robes. And then it makes an interesting comment in Psalm 133, verse 3. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mounts, mountains of Zion. What, what are these two mountains? If we know about the mountain of Hermon, it's, it's the far northern mountain, and, and Zion is the far southern mountain. And here, this Psalm of David, it's a recollection of how God has brought his people together from the north and from the south. He, he has united them in worship, uh, the worship of God. This is the unity. So, so David, in consolidating the kingdom, had brought all of Israel together, north and south, and they were able to worship the Lord together. And now David here, as he says this, the, the people of Israel recall these things to mind and think, God has restored our worship. He's united us. And how has he united us? He's united us through the common worship of his name in his place, in his house. And so a, a nation that had been full of strife and warfare and division had actually become united around the Lord. And this is how all true unity has to begin. It's, it's how the Apostle Paul says we have our unity in Ephesians 4, that we maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And that unity is not something we create or manufacture, but it's something that comes to us in Jesus Christ, in the very presence of God. And so it's interesting then to me that throughout the Psalms of Ascent, there are all sorts of references to the blessing that God had given to Aaron in Numbers 6. I think many people will know this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May his countenance look upon you. And may he turn towards you and give you peace. And throughout these Psalms, we have the blessings of Yahweh that are given as, as the people are gathered together as they worship the Lord. So we hear of uh, Psalm uh, 133, uh, there's blessing forevermore that the Lord has commanded. Or we see it in verse uh, Psalm 134, verse 3, may the Lord bless you from Zion. And then may he keep you. The, the psalm that refers to the Lord keeping you is Psalm 121, where six times it refers to God keeping his people. Now, we have to know the beginning of this psalm. Uh, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth. And then it goes on to talk about how he keeps you. He will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. Uh, and the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. He will keep your going out and your coming in. And so the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. Psalm 123 uh, verse 2 and 3, it says, Behold, as the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look upon the Lord our God, till he has mercy, compassion, graciousness to us. May have mercy upon us, O Lord. That language is, may he be gracious to us. And then finally, may he give you peace. We hear this in a passage like Psalm 122, verses 6 to 8. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Peace be within your walls. And so all of these blessings that God had given to his people through Aaron, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. We hear these in the Psalms of Ascent. Why? Because as we come, as we worship the Lord together, he unites our hearts. Together, we know his peace. Together, we know his blessing. There is great privileges and blessings that come as we worship the Lord. And worshiping him is not a commodity. It's not a convenience. It's not entertainment. It is about dwelling 
with God. And here is the beautiful thing, that in the gospel, it is not about a place that we go to worship. It is a gathering together of the people of God, which constitutes the church. It's the church is the assembled people. That, that's where God resides. That's where God dwells. He dwells among his people. And he dwells among his people as we proclaim his name and as we hear his word spoken over us and to us. The word of the gospel. And this word of the gospel, then, is what unites us because in Jesus Christ, what we hear in John 1, 14 is that the word became flesh and he tabernacled, he dwelt among us. And that God will dwell among us again when, when he sends the holy Jerusalem down, as Revelation 21 talks about. And God will dwell in her midst. Now, one interesting thing is that there in the Aaron, there the blessings of Aaron, it is mentioned that uh, may the Lord's uh, face shine upon you and may he turn his face towards you. And none of those blessings are mentioned in the songs here of Ascent. And it could be that, well, we don't know why, it could be that because the glory of, of the Lord, which descended on the tabernacle in the beginning of Leviticus, or the glory of the temple that, that was filled during the times of Solomon in, uh, I think it's Second Chronicles 6, if I recall correctly, um, the, the Lord's glory just filled the temple. This, this temple was not filled with glory. The latter temple, the temple as the Israelites came out of exile. But there is a temple that is filled with glory, a glory that we behold, the, the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, which John can say in his prologue, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, full of grace and truth. Do you want to know where God's presence resides? Do you want to know where his glory dwells? Do you want to see the face of God's approval, the face that shines upon you, you look to Jesus, the one who calls you up to ascend. He calls you to come to him. But the way that you come to him is by him coming down to you. The, the God who left heaven, who left his throne, who was the son of David, who descended so that we might be taken by him to him. He calls us to himself. And so as we gather as we gather as the people of God, and as we gather as the people of God to worship, we do so to hear his word which unites us and which calls us upward. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? As Psalm 24 says, it's the one who has clean hands, a pure heart, doesn't lift up his soul to what is false or swear by what is deceitfully. He'll receive blessing from the and the Lord Jesus is the one who ushers us into the very presence of God by God coming to us. So be encouraged that these Covidian exile days, as they've come to an end, and while worship doesn't feel quite the same as it did beforehand, God is restoring a worship among his people, a more pure, a more holy, a more refined worship, that we might delight in him more. Thanks for joining me on Table Talk. I'll see you on Friday. We're going to be making some changes in the future to Table Talk. There will be no Table Talk tomorrow, uh, but we will have one on Friday, and we'll be rolling out some new things in the fall here as fall ministry begins. We'll have a, a minute devotional at the beginning of the day rather than Table Talk every day. We'll be having some times of encouragement for you. We'll continue with Table Talk being twice a week, uh, our round tables on Friday, they'll carry on, and we'll have some new things for you. But it has been a joy to serve you through Table Talk. I'll have one more week where I'll uh, go through the final uh, blessings and praises at the end of the Book of Psalms, and then we'll wrap up Table Talk as we know it right now. If you've been encouraged, would you just maybe put a mention in the comments how you've been encouraged through Table Talk? Uh, whether that's on YouTube or here on Facebook as we're going live right now. Or would you just drop us uh, a message? You can go to our website, cbcilderton.ca. Uh, you can go to the About Us and the staff page there, and there's links. You can send a message to the staff. L let them know, whether it's Gary or Luke or myself, just let us know how 
the Lord has worked through Tabletop. We'd love to be able to share in your joy. So, thanks for joining me today on Table Talk. And until Friday, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you, and may he turn towards you and be gracious to you and give you peace. God bless. Have a great day.